pandemic spread across the world, survivors scrounging for whatever remains, infected feasting on the deceased. Killing isn't against the law, it's all survival. You are a survivor tasked with smuggling cargo out of the city, but not just any cargo. That cargo happens to be a little girl, and she is the key to ending all of this. This is The Last of Us. We don't have to do this. You know that, right? After all we've been through, everything that I've done, it can't be for nothing. How's it going guys? It's Lassie Fear, fortunate last more videos to bring you back to another episode of Smithy's Opinions. So if you haven't already at the time, which case you have, good for you. I'm obviously reviewing The Last of Us. So it's kind of hard for me to talk about this game without spoiling it. So with that said, I am doing this review entirely spoiler free, but I'm still going to put up a bit of a spoiler warning just in case something slips out. So with that said, let's get started with this review. So the main plot of The Last of Us takes place 20 years after this pandemic called the Cordyceps virus has taken over humanity. What's really interesting about this is actually Cordyceps is a real thing. You, If you look at pictures and stuff of it online, it's this virus that takes over animal or insects I think and it sort of controls their minds and <laughs> it's kind of gross but they can actually e explode in a matter of seconds if it takes over. I don't know much about this, it's just from what I've heard, but it's real, okay? And it's pretty much, it's evolved even more to take over humanity as well. So you play as Joel, a survivor who has seen terrible, terrible things. And he has done a lot worse than that. He is tortured, killed, and it's all for survival. Nothing in this world is going to come to you without survival. You need to know what you're doing or it's going to get you killed. You lie! You're a fucking liar! Shut up! When a group called the Fireflies, or more like, or more, the leader of the Fireflies asked for a favour in return for the weapons they were, they were getting, he and his partner can't refuse. Turns out that cargo is actually a young girl named Ellie. She is one of the most complex and interesting characters this year, besides probably, um, what's the girl's name? Elizabeth from uh, Bioshock Infinite. She is fantastic. Her, when she talks to you, it's very funny, and she keeps questioning you about the real world. Like I said, she's never really lived in the real world. She grew up, so she's 14 in the game, so she was born six years after the virus hit. So it's interesting to see how she doesn't see the world that other people used to. That's what I really love about Ellie. She's different. She doesn't know everything that everyone else does. She just knows some things. And a lot of other kids in the place don't know anything. It's just that a virus has taken over, it's infected everywhere, and that and all they can do is survive. What I love about this game is the chemistry between Joel and Ellie. Obviously I've already just mentioned it, but they constantly help each other out by uh, getting ladders, uh, crawling through um, small places to open doors, it's great. Their banter, like I said before, is fantastic. It also, it delves really deep into the world and the lore of the, uh, in The Last of Us and how the um, Cordyceps has taken over humanity, how the zombies look, which is surprisingly gross when she, once I show you some images in a minute, and it, it is very good. Oh, I'm sure your friend will be missing this tonight. <laughs> Light on the reading, but it's got some interesting photos. Now, now Ellie, that ain't for kids. Whoa! How how the hell would he even walk around with that thing? Get rid of that. Well, hold Just... your horses. I want to see what all the fuss is about. Oh. Why are these all stuck together? Um. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Bye-bye, dude. And also the other characters, while they don't get as much of the appearance as Joel and Ellie, they still are very complex and they have their own personality. For example, um, let in around the beginning of the game you meet Bill, who's very um, anxious, and she and so he uh, has a lot of trouble with people who he doesn't know, and he's a little in the head. So you have to you have to grow to him. You have to help him out in that small section of the game. Uh, Ellie. Hey, what are you... Joel? Bill! What are you doing? Bill! Turn around and get on your knees. Just calm down a second. Turn around All right. and get on your knees! 
So every character you meet is deep, and what makes and this is what makes those characters so great. For me, in the game, I'm not going to say anything about this, but winter was definitely the highlight for me because in the game it's split into four seasons: summer, fall, winter, and spring. And personally, winter was one of the best things for me. Without saying too much, it focuses on Ellie and her turning into more mature in into a more mature person because. At the very beginning in Summer and Fall, she sees terrible things, but she's still joking around and having funny banter with Joel and other characters. But once she goes through winter, she comes out a whole other person. I'm not going to say anything else, but she does some horrible things. And that's all I'm going to say. The graphics in The Last of Us are beautiful. Really beautiful. I can't keep overstating this. The Last of Us is split into four seasons. Like I said before, summer, fall, winter, spring, and each are equipped with their own unique colour palette. For example, summer and spring are very vibrant and they they gleam and they grow as well. And because nature has taken over towns, it looks fantastic. You also get to see um, in winter snowy landscapes and like every other place, even in the dark uh, urban environments, you see some really stunning vistas that really just add to this jaw-dropping experience. And I will tell you, this is a beautiful game. You will see some amazing stuff. I am not lying to you, you will see great things in this game. The environmental storytelling in this game as well is perfectly done. I love the way that they interact. Joel, Ellie and others interact with the environment. It's done so well and adds a bit more emotion to the game, like how they interact with dark boys and they play a little game and sometimes Ellie pops out a joke book and tells some horrible puns. It's it's really just adds to the experience. But sometimes it's very disturbing and sometimes it's more funny than others, so it it's mixed bag, mixed results. So. The graphics and locales really do heighten the immersion from the game. It just, like I said, it just is so real, it's so beautiful. Every part of this game feels like something out of an post-apocalyptic world. I mean, game, I mean, movies and books and games, they take the post-apocalyptic as a really drab environment, but games like Enslaved, which is the one thing that comes to mind when I think about it, is the only really post-apocalyptic game with a really vibrant colour palette. So that's a really good thing as well. Uh, the motion capture technology is done perfectly. It looks great. Every single character model looks amazing. And they all have these great facial animations. Some of them are crying right at the, right at the beginning of the game or sometimes they just, they're very angry so you can see the eyes really wide and they're very angry expressions. Um, four headlines, it is fantastic. And it goes right down to little details. Like Joel has, um, is getting very old. He's in his... Looks like I'm pretty sure he's in his uh, late 40s, early 50s. So he's got white hair coming out of his come in his hair. It looks very good. It just, like I said, it is a very real game. Like if this was to happen in the real world, which quite frankly I do not want to happen, it it really would feel like this in an actual real world scenario. And every time you walk into a house and read a boy's journal about what's been going on with his parents, what he's been doing, what he's been seeing, it just really just adds more to that story and it adds more to the world. It's great. And like I said before, graphics and set pieces are really amazing. And some scenes are just so beautiful. It can bring... It is just... It is just beautiful. It brings tears to my eyes sometimes when I just see some great colours and some great things. This is one of the only games that, with imagery that I've really just had to just cry a little bit. It is very beautiful. It's, okay, graphics, I'm just going to sum it with one word. Beautiful. That's all I'm going to say about it. It is really fantastic to see what Naughty Dog has done with this. I have to applaud them with that. They have really done some great stuff with the graphics. It's probably one of the most realistic games I've played in a very long time. The sound design is also impeccable to the point of nailing the horror in this in this world as post-apocalyptic hell. The guitar strings in some cutscenes and the ambience are really spot on and really heighten that you are all alone in this world but only a few people to count on and Ellie as your companion who keeps asking you questions. Also the voice acting deserves merit, they are all great and the motion capture works very well, their lip syncing looks good, there's no weird audio problems that have come in the game but I'm pretty sure I might come around later on but Boy Dog are very reliable, they release patches, they 
change up everything. I mean, they stuck with Uncharted 3 till this year, as far as I can remember. So, is Noyoyo very. They keep with their games for as long as they can, like Never Real do. They stay with their games until they know they've drained every last drop out of it. It's really good for them, unlike Call of Duty. The Infected are absolutely horrifying. I know I haven't really talked about it, but I am going to talk about it in a minute. These guys are incredibly scary. They have mutated faces. They're, they don't feel anything. They just eat people alive and then they run up to you and eat your neck off. No joke, that's actually what happens in the game. They will eat your neck off. It's gross. <laughs> they are, uh, clickers are also actually blind and they find you with the hearing and the clicks and that really works. The clicking is always frightening and whenever I play Last of Us I always keep the sound really high just to get myself screaming a bit because I really love this game. Just like I said, immersion is a great thing and this really hits the nail on the head. Now, probably the longest part of this segment is going to be the gameplay. The shooting is spot on. It does feel very difficult in the beginning and I actually found myself missing quite a few enemies which is a little odd for me considering, considering that but I'm, I'm more of a um, I'm more of a fighting game person, so I don't play a lot of FPS or third person shooters anymore. But I found, once I got used to it, I got a lot of hang of it. The weapon sway is a little odd at first, but once you get to the end, you'd actually upgrade it. So then you'd get less weapon sway or none at all. Like any survival horror game, people have gone and taken supplies, so supplies are really scarce, especially bullets. I found one time I was without revolver ammo for about two and a half hours, and that's not a joke. You cannot pick up what ammo for quite a while. You have to actually stick with your stuff. It just really, really annoys me though. Whenever I miss a shot, I actually smack myself on the head. I'm like, shit, I just shot a rifle. I missed. How could I miss? It's very stressful at times. And when you, when you're going up against an infected or a clicker and you miss a shot and you're reloading and you're cocking your gun, they can kill you and they will kill you in one hit. The infected are great to fight as the runners chase you and the clickers can hear you out. Like I said before. They, ha they are blind and they can hear you with their clicks and etc. It's very great. And it really does allow more diversity in encounters. Uh, human soldiers and scavengers are also great fun as they are smarter and will try to flank you and come up behind you so they can get stabbed in or they can choke you. It's really smart how they do this and I actually really, for the first time in quite a while, really love the AI in this game. There are some weird AI problems though like one time I was actually just standing there and they just walked right past me. I don't think it was just part of the, st I think it might have been part of the stealth idea, but it just brought me out of the immersion a little bit. Most battles allow, like I said before, diversity. You can either go in stealth, which is probably usually the better option considering, well, you don't have a lot of supplies, so it's usually easier to strangle or shiv someone in the back, which is usually obviously the best option to save ammunition. Or you could just shoot your enemies and fight up and or fight up close. So it's, it really does add a lot of diversity. So you can, there's really three options. You can go stealth, sneak out, kill a couple enemies, all good. You can run to the next section, which I really don't, I have actually tried and on harder difficulties it will get you killed, so don't do that. And obviously go loud and proud, so it just really does add a little bit more to every single encounter with the enemy. Gadgets and tools you use are also quite original really. I mean, they take ideas from original modern concepts, but they put their own little spin on it. For example, the nail bombs are pretty much handmade grenades. They are made up like scissors, screwdrivers, and they act as bit mines as well. So they're like proximity mines plus a grenade. So it's quite interesting how they use that. Smoke bombs are made with sugar, so when you chuck it, it obviously makes a big smoke cloud and on multiflower. It helps as a defensive and offensive tool. And upgrade melee weapons can also result in one-hit kills, which is really fun considering um, online it's almost impossible to kill a guy with bullets because of how scarce it gets. So if you have a melee weapon on you, it's usually the best way to go. All the weapons, like I said, including the pistols, rifles, shotguns, sniper rifles, etc. They are all work properly and they really do pack a significant kick which is quite good. I love all the weapons in this game and it really encourages to use every single weapon for different encounters. Like, I found myself using more weapons when I got on. Like, once I got the pistol sniper rifle, I didn't really find much use for it considering it was kind of a debunked um, sniper uh, rifle, but it just wasn't that powerful. But once you upgrade it with like armor piercing, it gets a lot more powerful. Same with, um, you can also upgrade with like extended clips, range, recoil, etc. 
The crafting is also brilliant. I loved scavenging every little nook and cranny just for a couple of um, an um, survival points so I can level up or it or just like finding like duct tape, which is so precious. I love just finding a bit of duct tape and you're like, yes, duct tape. It's the first game I really, really found scavenging a lot of fun. I haven't really done a lot of scavenging in a lot of games recently. Like, it's really fun because, like, for example, you can scavenge uh, duct tape and scissors to make a shiv and rags and alcohol to make a Molotov cocktail. What is amazing about this, and this is one of the reasons I really, truly love this game, is this sense of urgency. Like, there's one, some parts in this game, re really, you don't come in with the right tools. I mean, you've got ammunition and stuff, but sometimes you want to sneak around, and when an enemy's coming up to you, you actually can pop out your bag. We pop a Molotov cocktail or a shiv, and then you can jump over cover, sneak behind them and stab them. It's really smart in the way they do that. <laughs> it's actually really fun every time I tried it, but most of the time I usually fail and got myself killed, but... <laughs> it's fun, it's fun. The game is violent. Now, I did rest with my morals on this one because, well, other than Mortal Kombat, which was more gratuitous, this is pretty gory and it's a little disturbing at times. I don't think it's for me, but I really did think it, like I said, immersion is a big part of the game. But with death scenes like <sighs> the Beloder, which personally earns the award, a nominee for the year of the worst, grossest thing I've ever seen in a game, ever. Wow! <laughs> that gets me every freaking time. Like, seriously, that gets me every time. Exploded heads, severed arms and legs, and guts piling from corpses is disturbing. But it, like I said, immersion is important. And this really does have a lot of immersive elements, and that kind of adds to it. But sometimes I really do think the Naughty Dog were being a little bit gratuitous, especially with the clickers and the bloaters and stuff. It was... it's a little gross. It's not horrible, but I can see that it is a little very much mat very mature <laughs> multiplayer is also a nice distraction it is a in the in modes you get supply raid which is like team deathmatch with limited lives and survivors which is like search and destroy in call of duty it, you team up with uh three other survivors against four other people and you verse each other out it's really smart how they do this like you can buy ammo and armor and you can also craft out all these weapons, and it really does help online to do this. Small player is extremely punishable. I've actually really been pissed off at some people because they're just a lot higher level than me, and they know what they're doing, and they can sneak around me, and they shit me in the back. It really pisses me off, but, you know, it, I just think once you get the hang of it, it's a lot more fun. Like single player, ammo is scarce, it, and it really does encourage teamwork. I actually found myself always going lone wolf, and I always got myself killed because I would always stumble upon everyone. I didn't have any, like, bombs or anything, so I was just like, mm, just kill me, please. So I found if you stick with it as a team, it's a lot more rewarding, and I think it acts that way. So if you go in, like, a big squad, you help each other out by crafting weapons and healing each other. It's a lot more fun. Uh, small problems, though, do litter the game. I don't think it's, like, game-breaking or anything, but, for example, AI sometimes, well, actually, most of the time, does not see your companions. That really does break immersion for me, and I don't think it's very, and it obviously is not real. I just feel, one time I was actually in cover, and then Ellie just walked right past these two enemies and just came join me. It's not very smart. There's also some graphical like texture popping, but I really didn't care because this was one of the best games I've played. So it, it does, like I said, does break a bit of immersion, but what can you do? <sighs> My final verdict for The Last of Us. The Last of Us is beautiful, horrifying, brutal, and best of all, one of the best games I've played in a long time. Like, I'm not joking, besides games like maybe Arkham City and some um, Skyrim, some of the older games that like, released a couple years ago, I really found myself enjoying myself every at every turn. Every character, every single person in this game was just spot on. Really top notch. So every part of this world feels so real. And besides a few neglecting problems, it does stand as a competitor for Game of the Year. That, I'm not retaking that statement, it is and possibly could be this year's Game of the Year. 
And good job for Sony to keep this PS3 exclusive. And it so it gives a kick to Xbox being like, Haha, you got Halo? Nope, we've got Last of Us and we've got Uncharted. And we've got Metal Gear Solid. It is a pioneering game for the ages. And for that reason, I am giving it a perfect score of 10 out of 10. Now, I did wage a bit that I might have actually lowered the score, but I don't think I needed to because this was really a perfect game. Besides some small issues, it is an unforgettable adventure, fueled with great writing, gaming, and definitely lived up to the hype. So thank you Naughty Dog for one of the best games you've ever created and a great send off to the PS3. So bravo, you did yourself a good job. So with that said, I'd like to thank you for watching the Last of Us review. It did take me quite a while to get a lot of this footage, so I would like you to please like, favourite and comment on this video and please comment on what you thought was the best part of The Last of Us. Like I said, for me, it was probably the probably the season of winter that really cemented it for me. But what did you guys think? What did you think the best part of The Last of Us was? Uh, you can also private message me about any questions or think problems you might have and I probably will come back to you unless it's confusing, it doesn't make sense. So probably anything about gaming and movie, I will come back to you. Uh, also, suggestions would be nice for more episodes of this. I do put a lot of time into this, like I said before, so I would really love if you guys could give me that support and give me some more options for what I can do next. Uh, at the moment, I am waging on what I should do next in my movie review. Like I said before, I think I said this in the last review, but I am doing movie game, movie game. So I am going to try and either do Man of Steel, which I'm going to be watching next week and I'll give a review of that in the next two weeks or The Shawshank Redemption so those two movies are really good movies of, of that I've heard I've, I've watched Shawshank Redemption I would love to do a review but I haven't seen Man Still yet so I'm still urging on whether I should go see it yet but at the moment I think I, I think it might be a good idea if I see both and then make my decision by the way it's totally gonna be so Shawshank Redemption the doy nah I might do a bit of I might do both reviews so I'll see how I go I am taking a, after this video, I will be taking, I think, a two week break because, well, I've got holidays and I really just want to chill for a while. I've put my hardest into a lot of these videos. I haven't released a lot, but the videos I have released have been taking a lot of time in and I really do want to just take a break. What I might do though is I might still record if I've got time on my hands, but at the moment I've got a lot of stuff on. And I'm actually planning a collaboration video with a friend of mine. So that will come up eventually. But until then, I'll see you guys soon. This is Lastman.